Hello, I'm Bob Norton, CEO of Airtight Management and creator of the CEO and Entrepreneur Bootcamp. And this session is on creating sustainable competitive advantage and designing that into your business in many ways. I found that even graduates of some of the entrepreneurship programs and accelerators essentially have no clue what sustainable competitive advantage is. And I would argue it's the most important thing if you want to get funding. It's what creates an exit uh, and the opportunity in the future for an exit. Having competitive advantage or differentiation is a short-term advantage, but having sustainable competitive advantage has to be a plan over multiple years to maintain that lead in your market. Sometimes venture capitalists call it the unfair competitive advantage. So let's move to the agenda now and talk about what's going to be in this particular course. First, we're going to talk about why sustainable competitive advantage is required, not optional, for any high value enterprise. Second, I'm going to review the top 10 ways, or at least categories, of ways to create sustainable competitive advantage. Number three, we'll talk about how the discipline in your culture and a focus on these and the checklist of these 11 ways alone can help to create competitive advantage in almost any company at all. And number four, we'll talk about how the price to earnings ratio of any company is impacted sometimes by 5, 10, or even 20 times as much of the valuation of a company that doesn't have sustainable competitive advantage. So we'll look at some of those statistics to understand why this is necessary for any company that wants to attract capital and have an exit in the future. Number five, we're going to talk about how to become a breakthrough CEO and drive sustainable competitive advantage by controlling your culture and the discipline of that culture to be focused on working on the business and building enterprise value, not just chasing short-term cash flow or other things that, that feel good in the short term, but don't necessarily build the building of the company so that the, the engine keeps going no matter what. And that can be interpreted in many ways, but recurring revenue that's automatic, not chasing new customers every month is one of those things to get to that level of business opportunity and, of course, exit. So let's get into it. Here's a few of the top entrepreneurial success stories, and, and also not coincidentally, uh, three of the richest men in the world. And I would ask you to think about who's the best strategic thinker here. Of course, they're all good strategic thinkers, or they probably wouldn't be where they are, having created su sustainable competitive advantage in their business that multiplies that enterprise value. So this course is, is going to reference some other courses, and I wanted to point them out here in case you're seeing this course before the others. I'd probably recommend and, and go back and see competitive strategy and positioning first, see market entry strategy first, and see innovation and disruption first, as well as intellectual property. You might not need to see that first, but I think it would be best seen first because it's a drill down on one category of way to create sustainable competitive advantage, which is just in the intellectual property category. And there's five or six different subcategories or sub items within that category. Number five, the product service and development at light speed session. So I bring this up because all of these things are tightly intertwined. You cannot create sustainable competitive advantage unless you do these things well already. Every one of them is critical. So uh, let's talk about the, uh, the people on the right. Obviously, Bill Gates is the first face there. I hope you all recognized him. If you're not, you've, you've got some biographies to read and some history and business books to read. But in, in terms of uh, strategic thinking, 
he saw 20 to 30 years in advance that everyone would need a PC on their desk. And that was obvious to people who understand or understood at the time the mathematics of Moore's Law and the constant increase in processing power. But Bill Gates uh, built Microsoft. And, you know, although it wasn't a very innovative company, and it's not a very innovative company, it tends to be a more of a successful sales and marketing company than an innovation company. And, and even Bill Gates has admitted that through jealousy of Steve Jobs, who had more creativity in his organization and more beauty in the products and innovation. Tesla, obviously uh, Elon Musk here, was, is another wonderful example of a great CEO with tremendous strategic thinking. As a matter of fact, he may be the first in history to create a, created so many different companies with multi-billion dollar valuations between Tesla, SpaceX, uh, the Boring Company, Starlink, his satellite network that's beginning to come online now. I think they're launching enormous amounts of satellites using SpaceX. And his ultimate goal of putting humans uh, on Mars, as well as Neuralink, which is designed to connect artificial intelligence directly to the human brain. A far out uh, kind of sci-fi fantasy, and I'll be surprised if it happens in the next 10 years even. But it's something that you have to start on because it's a, a big goal. And then, of course, there's Jeff Bezos of Amazon, the world's biggest online store. And it wasn't named Amazon by accident. Amazon's the biggest river in the world, right, of distribution of water, right? Makes a lot of sense with 2020 hindsight. What he envisioned Amazon to be, because he didn't name that company Books.com. He had a real market launch strategy to build the world's biggest online store. And selling books was just his market entry strategy in the first year or two. And of course, it's grown to much uh, bigger vision in that, uh, that, that people didn't recognize initially, but was always in the works and in the mind of Jeff Bezos. So if you master all of these skills, you will become a top-notch CEO that can create companies that have billion dollar values and more. And I don't want to get caught up in the hype of being a unicorn and all that crap. The reality is building any company can become a hundred million dollar company, a billion dollar company, because a, a company is just a legal entity that you put products and services into. And so if you drive innovation and create products and obviously go after markets that are big enough, then you can create a very significant sustainable company. So why do you want to create sustainable competitive advantage? Let's look at that. Well, the number one reason is companies with that are worth far more, five to ten times more comparable companies with the same revenue because they have barriers to entry around their business. And so their exit value is much higher. And smart investors who know that are willing to put money into that business because the ROI from it is higher, and therefore you can get cheaper capital and get it earlier and not dilute your management team nearly as much. So, I mean, that alone is enough reason to make sure that from day one in your company, you are figuring out how to design sustainable competitive advantage into your business. Number two, it allows you to raise larger amounts of capital, right? People would like to invest in things that have 10, 20, 50 times return over a five-year period. They're not looking to take high risks of a startup and get a 10% yield per year. They're looking for a 40 or a 50% yield or better because some of these companies aren't going to work out. And the ones that do pay the bulk of the return, that's sort of the dirty little secret of venture capital. You know, even companies that get 5 and 10 and even $20 million in, in funding fail all the time. And the ones that are successful pay the yield in the venture capital fund to allow them to stay alive while 80% of them go out of business. 10% of them become what they call the living dead, companies that, you know, almost never will pay back their return, but might be, you know, profitable enough or marginally 
profitable or break even to survive. So only by creating sustainable competitive advantage do you create a high value company with an exit potential that can attract capital early on. And of course, capital is sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy of success. You're not going to be successful unless you can build the building and building the building to then rent the space requires that you invest up front. There is almost no company that's ever been created without either investing sweat equity or capital or both. And people that believe that myth that you can create something out of nothing need to study the law of physics. That does not and probably has never, ever happened. At a minimum, a founder and a founding team are bringing expertise and sweat equity to get this business started and to sort of prime the pump and get it going. And that's a complicated subject in itself. But if you design sustainable competitive advantage into a company, you're going to have a much easier time attracting capital. In fact, you're unlikely to attract any capital, at least not from sophisticated, useful investors, without having that SCA box checked. Number three, SCA increases margins because the differentiation is better, and so therefore you're not selling at commodity prices and competing with five or ten other people, which also drives up your sales and marketing costs. So it's multiplicative, the advantages this provide. It's not even linear. It's sort of exponential as you check off multiple of these boxes. Number four, sustainable competitive advantage inhibits competition. And as I said, it raises margins, right? Because you can have more rapid growth because the margin, whether it's your net profit margin or your gross margin, generates cash flow that can be reinvested to make the product better and to even increase your market share over time, not to mention the ability to attract and keep better people in your business. Number five, it attracts alliances and partners. You don't want competitors. You want partners that want you to be successful. And that means in sales and distribution and referral and have complementary products. Because when you're complementary, people want to help you succeed because it also helps them, right? So differentiation usually creates competitive advantage. But what we're talking about in this segment is sustainable. So don't forget that word sustainable. Competitive advantage may not be sustainable. Sustainable competitive advantage is a plan over several years, and the barriers to entry may change. The differentiation of the product may change. The pricing, the target markets, all of those will expand as you want to get your company bigger. So don't forget sustainable is the key word here that we're talking about right now.